Pastor Dwayne here along with my beautiful bride, Miss Cameron, and we are excited to be back in the studio bringing you some broadcasts with us just sitting here at the table talking and teaching and just sharing everyday life with you. We've been broadcasting a lot of our Sunday messages uh, recently. We've been very busy this summer, and uh, but it's good to be back. We want to thank all of our friends and partners who make this possible. I don't know if you know this or not, but most recently, VTN sent... Um, a graph to our ministry. And in the 10 a.m. slot among Christian television stations, we're garnering 79% of the audience. That means the programs on TBN and Baystar are only getting 21%. And thanks, that's thanks to you for turn, tuning us in and watching. We get 79% of the Christian audience on those three networks. VTN's leading the way. And it's not just our broadcast. People across Arkansas and this region, they prefer VTN for all of their Christian programming. And we just thank Pastor Happy, Miss Jeannie, uh, Mr. Jim Grant, and all the great people at VTN for making this possible. If you're not a partner with VTN, you need to be a partner with VTN. We're partners with VTN every month. And you need to partner with them as well. And also, if you're looking for partners, we need partners here at Dwayne Miller Ministries to keep this broadcast coming. But we love you. We pray for you all the time. We thank you for your emails and prayer requests at DwayneMiller.com. So we just want to say once again, thank you and God bless you. I'm going to ask my beautiful bride to pray. And we're excited this week to be talking to you practically and prophetically about contending for faith, contending for miracles what God's doing in this third day, what he's releasing in this third day. So stay tuned. Sweetheart, would you pray? Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come and declare your word and use the matchless name of Jesus to do so. Thank you. To walk daily in that, to keep our armor polished continually as we go throughout this earth, we do not have to fear. And we thank you for that. What a mighty, mighty way to live to live in authority, mm -hmm. to know who you are in Christ and walk in that. We thank you for that, and we pray, Father, for those that thank are not you. quite sure what I'm talking thank about, you, Lord, yes. that you will have them tune their ears in, tune their hearts in, and to get all that, those spider webs and cobwebs out of their mind, clear their minds, clear their hearts, to receive what you would have them to this week, yes, yes. for lives to be changed, Father. First and foremost, to come to know your Son, as Savior, if they have never done that, if they have never accepted your Son as Savior, let that be mm. the first thing that they do before they even turn this broadcast off. All they have Thank to do Lord. is call upon the name of the Lord, and they shall be saved, Amen. just as the thief on the cross Amen. did. We, we declare this done for those that may not have any intention of turning on Christian broadcasting today, mm. Father that the Holy Spirit just moves in that hotel room, moves in that home, yes. and comes in and invades with the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. and calls them to you, Father. Let that be done today. In mm -hmm. your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. We're living in a very shaky time in the natural. And I don't think, sweetheart, that I have run across as many church leaders, pastors, Christians, that are gripped by fear mm -hmm. as greatly as people are today. That's true. People today are absolutely mm -hmm. fearful That's true. about what's going on, the future. And God did not give us the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And so if God didn't give us the spirit of fear, who did? 
That's the right. enemy. That's God right. gave you a spirit of power, love, and a disciplined mind. Mm -hmm. And one of the great keys to walking in faith is to have that discipline in your mind and to be ready to evict any fear or any thoughts that come against the Word of God. And so it's so unfortunate because there are a lot of people probably watching today you and I both know a lot of people. There are people who come to our church, and though they've been raised in church, they know the Word. They don't know the Word for themselves, right. and they don't realize what a weapon the Word is, and they, they are gripped by fear. And I want to talk to you this week about prophetically what it means to live in the third day. And I'll get into the meat of this later, but I want to give you just enough of it to get us started and if you go to the book of Hosea, chapter 5 and the first part of chapter 6, Hosea is prophesying right now. He talks about in Hosea chapter 5, verse 14, For I will be like a lion to Ephraim and a young lion to the house of Judah. He, he's talking about judgment that, come, that came against Ephraim because they didn't know the word for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they listened to the Assyrians and they set up their own place of worship, mm -hmm. their, their own type of worship. They, they quit going down to Jerusalem to worship. And, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of Christians today that think if you just put the name of Jesus on it mm -hmm. or you just put church on it, that it's truth. And God said, I'm like a lion in judgment to Ephraim because of that, and a young lion to the house of Judah. Well, that's a reference to the Messiah. And he's coming the first time, a young lion. He was born of the tribe of Judah. But he said to this, he said, I even I will tear and go away, and I will take them away, and no one shall rescue. I will return again to my place. And he did. Christ ascended to heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. I'll return to my place until they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. And then in chapter 6, verse 1, listen to this prophetic word. Come and let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, that's the key, after two days he will revive us. And on the third day he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain in the earth. Now listen to this. And then we're going to make this very practical for you. He says, after two days. Now you have to remember that the Bible says very clearly in Psalm 90 and, and in Peter, he said, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So when he says two days, he's talking about 2,000 years. Bible scholars agree that this is a messianic prophecy of Jesus' first and second coming. The young lion in Judah, that's his first coming. And from the first coming, he said, after two days or 2,000 years. Well, it's been 2,000 years since the Messiah came the first time. And so now we are in the third day. So listen, after two days, he will revive. That means to resuscitate something that's died. And in the third day, he will raise us up so that we may live in his sight and we would pursue the knowledge of the Lord so that His going forth may be established. So let me make this simple. There is a spiritual revolution. Someone made a movie recently called The Jesus Revolution about the, the uh, Jesus movement in the late 60s and early 70s. At that same time, there was the outbreak of the charismatic renewal. It happened in an Episcopal church in the northwest part of the country, spread to every denomination. Every denomination from Catholics to Baptists were touched by this, uh, this uh, charismatic renewal. The Word of Faith movement was born in the midst of that. To what? To, to bring the knowledge of faith and the power of your confession to, to reality. And in the midst of all of this, revolution, he says, but after two days, he's going to raise us up. We've had the reviving of the power of God's Word, the reviving of 
this church that went through seasons of uh, darkness and death and the loss of the truth. But God, after two days, he, he will revive that which has died. And I believe this third great awakening that we are in, in the world, and is coming to America. It's in America, as a matter of fact. They're seeing <coughs> record numbers of people come to Christ That's on the right. West Coast being baptized just like during the Jesus movement. But what is it all about? It's a revolution. We're going to take America back, not through the political realm, but through the spiritual revolution of faith mm -hmm. and contending for faith. The definition of a revolution is an uprising resulting in the overthrow of an established government by the people being governed. And listen, an uprising, but not, this is not a literal uprising. This isn't a civil war. This, this is a spiritual uprising because we're not wrestling with flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual uprising resulting in the overthrow of an established government by the people being governed, a radical, pervasive change in society and the social structure, often accompanied by violence, but Listen, the kingdom of God is not uh, portrayed by violence. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is in spiritual violence, spiritual war. Right. What is this movement going to look like? What does it look like? It's people who come into the understanding of who they are, what's legally theirs, and they go to war with the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and faith as their confession. So I asked Cameron when we were on our way here, I said, I need you to talk to our viewers because sometimes we pastors and Bible teachers and prophets, we've been doing this sometimes so long that we just assume people know or our language becomes language that doesn't come down to the level of a very common person. And I asked her, I said, sweetheart, how did you go from a traditional, love Jesus, know the Word, was taught the Word, how did you go from a, a denominational believer who never missed church, you were there every time the door opened, you knew a lot about the Word, but in your own testimony, but when tragedy struck your life, you were powerless. Exactly. How did you go from being a powerless denominational person to the woman of faith that you are today? And I promise you, she operates in faith more than I do. She speaks, I mean, I'm not saying I don't, but I mean, she really, she checks me every once in a while in my, in my confession because she just, she doesn't allow anything to come out of her mouth that's not word and faith. And she speaks to weather and she speaks to, all sorts of things. How did you go from being just a, just a normal, nominal Christian mm -hmm. to a powerful person of faith? Mm -hmm. Well, you've already answered it. He, when he concluded, right before he switched to me, you answered it. We have to realize who we are in Christ. And when you, you usually don't prepare me for what I'm going to say, but you did give me a little <laughs> preparation for this, and I'm glad you did. And at first I told you, now don't ask me how I transitioned not that I don't want to share it, but it, it was so lengthy, and I did so many things because I was learning without a teacher other than what I was just doing for myself with the Word and as the Holy Spirit was downloading into me. So I thought, how do I condense that in this short series? And you said, don't worry about condensing it, just tell it. But to condense it, I figured out who I was and I wasn't just a believer. I figured out that God was my father. People out there may say, I know God is my father. But get that in your head. And when God is your father and you know that he is the head and you are the body, you mentioned this Sunday, you cannot drown if you know that your head is above water. If your head is above water, you cannot drown. You mm -hmm. cannot die. So I had to get the realization of who I was in Christ, I had to walk with that authority in me, mm -hmm. knowing what place the enemy had in my life, that he was not someone that could overtake me at any notice, and I had no power of it. So often we think, well, we live in a fallen world, 
So if we're in line to get cancer, then we're just going to get it. We can't keep from it. If grandmama had it, well, I guess we're going to get it too. If we're in line to get diabetes, I guess that's our, our as I think gamblers or someone say, your number is up. You've heard that <laughs> phrase. Um, I can't believe I even know that phrase. My mother's <laughs> going to be upset that I know that phrase. But that's kind of how that denominational people, I think, kind of walk. We just, they know they're in a fallen world, and we are. That is a true statement. But the scripture is clear. We are in this world, but not of it. And that is not just in a spiritual sense. Mm -hmm. That is in the physical sense, too. So I had to retrain my mind to know that I was not a victim. I was the victor. And... I guess that's how it all began, is I, had, I just had to retrain, retrain, retrain. And when I fully grasped who I was, the authority via Scripture, not in my own head, but via Scripture, who I was, the authority that I had, then I knew what place to put trials in. If a trial came, and we're not promised to be trial-free. Right. Our lives have not been trial-free. No, that's right. Have not been loss-free. But when a trial comes, you need to know what to do to combat it. You may still have pain. Mm -hmm. Those that are walking through battles right now, there's literal pain with that. Tear-jerking pain. Mm -hmm. There's um, a wonder sometimes of how you're going to get out of this or that or the other. That's all natural. But turn your situation and how you handle it into a supernatural. Mm -hmm. You get a diagnosis. Be glad you've got a name for the beast. Because what would this scripture say? Anything that has a name, whose name is above that? We have that name. We have the authority to use that name. Picture that as your sword to cut the head off of whatever you have. It could be financial. It could be a relationship issue. It could be spiritual. It could be a prodigal child. It could be health, whatever it is. We have the authority, once we know what we're facing, to cut that off. <clears throat> and I went farther than you intended no, I, me to. No, I want to back up. Actually, you didn't go far enough. I want to back up. Okay. I want to say you and I were raised in a, in a system and a common phrase in that. They even have a song by the phrase, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Yes. And somehow or another that was supposed to be an act of, uh, or a statement of humility. Mean, well, you know, humility, I'm just a sinner yes. saved by grace. Yes. And that's not true. The moment that you're born again, you become a saint. You no longer are a sinner. Mm -hmm. But so having been raised that we were just poor old sorry sinners mm -hmm. and we just thankful we're saved and going to heaven. Who did you f learn that you are? As, who are you in Christ? Who, who, as, a, as, as a child of the Father, mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you came to understand that identify you? Who are you? Tell some lady out there. There's some lady out there that's been beat down her whole life. Oh, yeah. And religion's told her she's nothing, et cetera, et cetera. And she's born again. She knows the Lord. Who is she? Oh, she's royalty. He's royalty. You are royalty. Do the royals worry about anything, really? They think they're invincible. We are invincible to the point that whatever comes to us, we can chop its head off. And I get, I get, I kind of get carried away when I talk. <laughs> the other day I was talking she to somebody, does. and I got a little carried away because I get so passionate about this. Because we need to be passionate about the power that we have, and we need to walk in that daily and continually. Someone said, "Well, these declarations that you declare and these things that you say, you act like you're just, you're always in combat mode. You're always, wa are you waiting for the shoe to fall? Always, are you just always thinking the sky is going is falling?" No, but you have to always keep that armor polished. Mm -hmm. And you have to always keep that armor on. And I know I'm veering away again. I no, told no, you I was going right. to go down a rabbit hole. But if you gave me the opportunity. But we are warriors. You know, we did sing those cute little songs when we were walking down the aisles at Vacation Bible School, Onward Christian Soldiers. Oh, if they had just gotten in our minds of what we really were. We mm -hmm. are a soldier in the army of God, and we are Navy SEALs in the army of God with the power and the authority to chop down any demon, any principality that comes against us. 
And whether you're male or female, boy, girl, it doesn't matter your age, you can be a 10-year-old little girl and you can be a warrior for Christ. That's right. And there's nothing <laughs> that you have to fear. And when I realized that and realized that everything that has a name, every principality, every trial that comes against us, no matter what category it falls in, it's under our feet. Stop on it. Don't give it a chance to breathe and walk in that victory. Yes. Did I answer it better that time? Yes. And, and the fact of the matter is, is it begins with, and we're talking about third day revolution that starts right here in your understanding of who you are in Christ. It starts with your perception of your father. Yes. And many of us were raised believing that God was angry mm -hmm. and that he was out to get people, you know? I mean, that God's mad and, and you know, you're a sinner and you may be saved, but still you're a sinner and God's mad at you and God's a God of judgment and wrath. Mm -hmm. and well, that kept us bound and it kept us in a certain place. The fact of the matter is, is that you were raised by a great father. I was raised by a great father. And that helped my perception of God the father mm -hmm. be that he is, a, he is a magnanimous father. He's a generous father. He's a father of love. And you and I were chosen, adopted. We were made holy the moment we were born again. You, you can't do anything to be righteous. Your righteousness is as filthy rags, but the moment you were born again, you became the righteousness of God in Christ. Now think about that. The righteousness of God in Christ means I am everything Jesus is. Right now, in my spirit, man, I'm everything Jesus is. I'm holy, I'm blameless, I'm faultless, I'm sinless. Mm -hmm. John really just takes it to a whole other level and, and offends the religious crowd when he says that uh, in, first, in first John, he says in chapter three, that we don't sin, that we have no sin, we don't sin. Now, I know you're saying right now, when I wait a minute, pastor, you, you have to know, you just don't know me. Well, your flesh sins, your mind may still have an ugly thought, but your spirit man doesn't sin. And I've learned in helping people, especially recovering addicts, if you can teach them who they really are, mm -hmm. which is a saint, mm -hmm. then automatically their conscious mind will start training them to understand in the subconscious if they do something like they used to do before they were saved, then th their immediate response is not going to be condemnation, shame, and guilt. It's going to be you know, that's not who I am. That's not me. That's not who I am. Right. You know, I don't know why I did that. I'm not going to do that. That's, that's how people walk in freedom and yes, liberty. You I'm can't thinking. condemn people out of sin. You preach against it all day long, and they're just going to get worse. But you can show them who they are. And it begins with the perception of the Father. Mm -hmm. And in your situation where you lost everything in your world... I would say the first thing that you had to come to terms with is who you are because of who your father is. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what it boils down to. And, you know, there are a lot of declarations that I declared to renew my mind. There were a lot of scriptures that I put to practice and put into my spirit. Every day. Oh, yes. This they, is not something you can just do no, on Sunday. No, no. Um, I, I was preparing... Like, like a lawyer would prepare for, for their... Um, Court case. No, I'm trying to think when they get, when they get their oh, degree. For their... Law, for their uh, uh, <laughs> my mind just went blank. <laughs> hopefully you know what we're when talking pass about. Pass the bar. Pass the bar, thank you. <clears throat> um, so I went through a very, very um, tedious process of renewing my mind. It, it's not... Maybe for some it is immediate, but for me it wasn't. I had a lot of doctrine that I had to weed out um, and correct to get to where I was but when I, it, it does boil down to at the at the end of the day realizing who you are and your identity in Christ knowing that we are valued regardless of what we mm -hmm. have done understanding that even though we may be in the trial because we created 
the situation to put us in the trial. There are many that are, that are in the valley right now, and, and you dug your own hole. Again, that's the same as someone that's in a trial where they were absolutely, they had nothing to do with it. Perhaps they have cancer or something. A hole is a hole. Yeah. And we can get out of it with the name of Jesus if we know who we are. Absolutely. We're talking about, and we're going to be out of time in just a moment, we're talking about third day revolution. Thir the, the third day that we're in, this is a day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. After two days, Hosea said, or 2,000 years from the coming of Messiah, he will revive us. There is a revival of Holy Spirit, power, authority, and dominion. And hear me carefully. You know, I'm thankful for revivals like I went to in Brownsville in 1996, was touched by the Holy Spirit. A million people were saved in five years, 100,000 full-time people uh, called a full-time ministry. That's, thank God for that. And all of the manifestations and the strange things and the miracles, and, all, and that's all wonderful, and I believe in all of that. But at the end of the day, if you don't take that encounter that you have, yes, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and operate your prayer language. But hear me, if you don't renew your mind, if you don't transform your mind, Joyce Meyer wrote a book about it, The Battle is in the Mind. If you don't get control of your mind, then you will not control your confession, mm -hmm. and your words are legal documents in the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. either for the promises of yes. God and the blessings of God or for the negative. You know, our friend Apostle Nash says that in this day, in this, this third great awakening, what the ecclesia, the praying church, must realize is that we contend from the promises of God, right. from heaven to earth, not for the promises yes. of God. A great example of that is very simple. We're going to come back tomorrow and pick up right here. And that is, are you healed? Well, the doctor's report says, but the word says, yes. I have already, already been healed by his stripes. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be healed. See, that's contending from the promise. The promise says I'm healed. So I don't care what it looks like in my body. I don't care what the doctor says. I'm healed. Well, we're out of time. Time flies when you're having fun. We want to help you. We want to release prophetic truth about this day and time in which we live. But we want to make it practical this week. We want you to have become equipped to walk out your destiny. Come see us at the Edge Church on Sunday at 1030. We'd love to meet you. People are coming. We're growing. God's doing supernatural things. And we want to be a part of that happening in your life as well. We'll see you tomorrow right here on BTN. Mm -hmm.